And a good morning to you. I am the Sultan, and welcome to the Daybreak Show. Stirring my coffee with chopsticks using the Vortex method. The only way to truly optimize the taste of your coffee on a molecular level. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Just got back from the 21 convention. Dealing with some seasonal allergies here. Going from one region of the country to another. <clears throat> and the various forms of pollen can wreak havoc on a person's system as you build up immunity and start getting used to the area. And one of the best ways that you can actually help and alleviate some of the seasonal allergies is to eat local honey. I have a farm near me that has local honey. And I take one teaspoon of that rather than <clears throat> having pills and medications and Claritin and these kinds of things. Uh, not to put down any medications, but I would rather try to solve things in a natural way first. But local honey, not honey you buy in the store. It's got to be honey from a local farm. It's got to be something that's produced in your area from the bees that have pollinated plants and flowers in your area, your region. So the local honeys are going to be the best. One of the things that I was telling the attendees of the conference, as I did over 30 broadcasts, podcasts, mixed with people, became an ambassador at the 21 convention, I told people that they're going to hear something, just like I tell you guys. You're going to hear something that's going to flip a switch inside of you that's going to make you unrecognizable this time next year. Let me say that again. You are going to hear something that's going to flip a switch inside of you that's going to make you unrecognizable next year. At this time. This time next year. How can you be unrecognizable? Financially, physically, mentally, emotionally, relationship-wise, logistically, geographically. That's why these talks are important for you. One piece of wisdom leveraged properly is going to just make a, a light bulb go off in your head flip a switch like nothing else ever did. You might read a book, you, you've seen this before, where you might read a book and what happens is one sentence, excuse me, one paragraph, just one out of a whole book can change your life. When I interview people, one of the things I look for is key words and phrases and I write those things down. When I write those things down, that becomes my questions to the person that I'm interviewing. A lot of people will provide questions. I don't like people providing questions that I need to ask. Otherwise, they can interview themselves. And there's no need for an interviewer. A good interviewer brings the data brings the emotions, brings the purposes out of a speaker, out of an author, out of a thought leader. One thing, one sentence, one paragraph, one concept can flip a switch inside of you and make you unrecognizable this time next year. It's consistent with my whole getting unstuck. I used to say 2016 is the year you get unstuck. 2017 is the year that you get unstuck. 2018 is the year that you get unstuck. 2018 is almost over now, isn't it? 
So now I have to say 2019 is the year that you get unstuck, but you still have. Think about this. We're more than halfway through October now. What do you have left? November and December. Can you get unstuck in two months? It's possible. Highly unlikely, but it's un but it is possible. Because once the in America, once the quote unquote holidays start, and they actually start in the beginning of November, let's get real. Like Halloween is the beginning of the quote unquote American holidays. <clears throat> And then next thing you know, New Year's is here. How do you, how do you start the process of getting unstuck? I think it comes from listening and taking to heart the things that you hear and putting them to practice in your life. Super important. I like to say, in the year that I'm in, 2018 is the year that you get unstuck. And then I always refer to the next year as the year that you make your first million. Super important. Let's go to Twitter. There was an older couple in a diner at the register paying for their meal. The wife says to the husband, do you have a 20? And his response was one of the funniest things. It was so funny for me. I don't know. No one else thought it was funny. It just struck me as being hilarious. He said, if I had a $20 bill, I would stay up all night and look at it. And there's... And that's not from this era. This, this couple was in their 80s. And I know that had to be a phrase from somewhere in his past. It, it sounded like something from the vaudeville era. If I had a $20 bill, I would stay up all night and look at it. Just made me laugh. And I don't even know what that means. I don't know if you find it funny or not. Are you prolonging life? or just putting off death. Every man needs to ask himself this question. Would you, fuck you, would you? If you could step outside yourself and look at yourself, would you be attracted to you? And I'm not talking about homosexuality in that way. I'm talking about as a person. If you looked at yourself the way that the opposite sex looks at you, would you want to be with you? It's a hard question, isn't it? So your answer may help you push away the cheesecake, the Doritos, the fifth slice of pizza, all the endocrine disruptors that you are putting on your body because of fragrances and soaps. And it might make you crank out another rep or throw another 10 pounds on the bar at the gym. So I'm going to ask you again. Would you fuck you? I am looking for a female journalist to get my complete straight razor shave. Of course, without the blade. I'm just going to go through the whole process. It'll be as if she is getting a shave with the hot towels, the lather. And I'll be just kind of scraping the lather off of her, not really shaving her. But doing all the lotions and potions and massage. And then have her write an article about what men experience when they get a straight razor shave. So, do you know any female journalists that might be interested in that? Let me know. gb at georgebruno.com I want you to say this right now. I don't know how to lose. Say it. Say it with me. On the count of three. 
One, two, three. I don't know how to lose. Say that before you walk out of the house. Say that before you go on a date. You're going to walk taller. You will walk 20% faster. Watch what it does for you. When you don't know how to lose, when losing is not an option in your life, things change. If you're not playing to win, then it's a hobby. And that's cool. If that's all you want. Game, fit looking, healthy lab numbers, one audiobook per week, minimal to no alcohol, I'm not hammering alcohol, gratitude, domination mindset versus a competing mindset, being the average of the five people you hang out with or listen to, journaling and writing daily, perfecting your presence on video, being a friendly guy but not a nice guy. These are all things a man needs. Extremists can kiss my ass. Examples of where people can be extreme and consider their extremism to be all in. I'm all in on this. And everyone else is not committed, but they're all in. Let me give you some examples. The carnivore diet. When I teach things, what I teach is options. You might be all in, but there's no such thing as anyone who is 100% anything. I did strict carnivore for 30 days, lost 14 pounds, got back in the gym. Now I am mostly carnivore and I consider myself a high protein, high fat, low carb lifestyle. I no longer do a no carb lifestyle, but I notice the more carbs and vegetables that I add and vegetable oils, the shittier I feel. So I'm kind of dialing that back a little bit. But the people who are just like Joe Carnivore, they're just as bad as Joe Vegan. Which leads me to the next thing people can be extreme at. The whole plant-based bullshit. One of the reasons why I think veganism is an eating disorder and a cult is because of the implications when you, when you don't do it, the accusations you get when you are not it. We'll get into that at a later date. Grooming. There's extreme groomers. Men that end up looking like women. You get your damn brows waxed and so perfect, you look like a friggin' drag queen. Your hair is there for a reason. Okay, so you might have a unibrow. Okay, you can take that off. But these guys getting their damn eyebrows waxed so perfectly or where it looks like your eyebrows are put on with a Sharpie. That's extreme. And you're getting reinforcement from the wrong people in your life. Beards. The beard Nazis. If you don't have a beard, you're a woman. If you shave, you're half a man. Fill in the blank. You know all that stuff. I encountered extremists in the beard community, which I learned to hate, but learned to love moderate people. I had to experience it myself and I speak from experience on this pipes the pipe Nazis the people who only light their pipes a certain way and if you do it this way then you're not a real pipe smoker cigar people leave the band on take the band off make the ash go to an inch oh you flick the ash off too fast you know nothing about 
extremists. Religion, answering everything with the scripture. I'm a Christian. I'm a committed Christian person. But I'm not like throwing scripture at everybody. That's virtue signaling. I don't need to do that. Follow me around for a day. See my compassion. See how I treat people. You'll come to the conclusion that there's something different about me by the way that I treat people. Because I'm a Christian. Not because I wear it on my sleeve. Supplements in the weightlifting world. The supplement people. Extremists can be. The kindness. Be kind. Everything so be kind. Sometimes you have to be tough. Step up to the plate and be a jerk. And be firm. Live and let live. What a great philosophy. Well, it's time to go to work. I have to be at the salon at 9 o'clock. You have a great day today. This time, next year, you can be completely unrecognizable. My friend, male or female, start today. Thanks for watching. See you again soon.